Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the El Clasico of League. It has been a long time since we had a best of five between these two teams, in which their last bout was the 2014 EU LCS Spring Split Finals, which Fnatic beat SK 3 1. As such, when we look at this series, a lot of things have changed, including the rosters. This segues us nicely into our players to watch in this series. Treats for SK and upset for Fnatic. Both have played vital parts for their teams during the regular season and both need to be performing if either team wants a shot at whoever they face in the next round of the lower bracket of playoffs. So, without further ado, let's jump into game number one. For the entirety of the LEC playoffs, we have an editor, so I can say something like, Aurora, put a dancing banana on screen. Now make it dance even faster. There you go. Now, the screen doesn't look good. In actuality, Aurora, just push the screen up slightly, place champion icons there. And now put the actual champions from game one there. Thank you. Now, a lot of you have seen this team fight probably before. And it's time that we put some drama on it. Bring up the title card. Uh, what should it be called? I mean, it's one minute 40 of fighting. Uh, the one minute and 40 second fight. Okay, now Aurora, just spice up the title a bit, make it just go, and there we go. Can you tell I'm having fun with an editor? <laughs> Anyways, enough stalling, here we go. Tinks goes charging in at Niski, and thanks to a lovely time flash from him, he knocks himself away from SK, allowing him to not be knocked up by Alistar. What's more, SK don't layer their CC correctly, as the Onslaught of Shadow's Fear is used, but the Everfrost from Blue goes wide, and the stun is not landed. Now, you may be wondering, how has it not been landed on a target that's literally stuck moving in one direction due to the fear? Well, Niski perfectly times his W, on himself, speeding himself up, and Blue just misjudges that extra speed as the Everfrost stun does not land as well as the charm. Then Niski can turn this fight around as the Shockwave locks Tinks under the turret, plus the Feather Storm is used by Jezu in order to keep himself alive for now. Psst, Aurora, could you just put a death mark right here for uh, Tinks? Rest in peace, my sweet little child. As the turret heated up and the last blast from it lands onto Jezu, we get a remix on the blast from the past in terms of a cast as the flash jump bear slap comes out from self-made, securing the second killer to fight for Fnatic. Hilly arrives, and this buys time for Niski to press F5 and TP back in, but Blue uses his trap card and charms Niski under the SK turret, meaning the big time players in this fight so far for each team are the towers. Welcome to Turret Talk. Hey, good looking, what's cooking? Hey, 오늘은 어땠어? So you're the Korean turret. Luckily, I was programmed with a voice translator. There we go, I'm Gucci, my dude. Nice, oh, what you been up to? So just killed an overzealous horse and managed to shoot a pretty bird girl. It was fun. 
That's cool. I just shot a android woman and I feel good. Well, I shot more than you, therefore European turrets are better than Korean ones. Just you wait till world. We will show you our power then. Smile. And that was this week's episode of Turret Talk. Drunk man go boing on Ari, grabbing the shut down. And then the cow gets up upset. Tid. Yeah, I thought that one was good. And we aren't done yet. Genex finally arrives. And down goes Bwipo. Speed up through the chase now. As Aatrox finally catches upset. And the Yordle cannot rocket jump away. Plus Jazzy respawns. And gets revenge on the bear who slapped him. And that is then checkmate. For Hilly, as he is left to die as Niski watches him fall. Although that wasn't a play that Fnatic won off of, we're basically done with game one. Let's just switch over to game number two. Now, let's look at the map positions of each team. As we can quite clearly see, Fnatic are being forced into SK's territory. Genax is building up his Naba and is very close to transform. As such, we can kind of expect SK to start to push Fnatic deeper and deeper into their own territory, forcing essentially a fight to occur as there'll be no more room for Fnatic to escape into. Lilia gets a swell seed to land on top of Niski, forcing him deeper into SK's base to avoid the damage from the Lilting Lullaby and the inevitable death. What's more, Bwipo kindly donates to Genax's Nah the ability to transform, and he makes full advantage of this. He bounces off of the minions that are crashing into SK's turret slash inhibitor and then Stride Breakers in to land the Nah ultimate onto Niski. But it just does a lot of damage and SK realistically struggle to follow up on this. But where SK struggles, Fnatic thrive as they force their engage to protect their low health members, a self-made dives onto blue as Treats gets Emperors divided and is killed off with the remains of the Fnatic team getting that one. Then we kind of get this little break. Uh, Aurora adds something funny here. And we are back, and yet again, we need to keep our eyes on Genax. He jumps back onto Niski, forcing Hilly to ult and W to try and protect him, but that misses, and Genax gets the kill onto the Azir, and the Void Seeker from downtown executes off the Rakan, who failed to do his job. Now we look at Fnatic's top, Bwipo, who is forced to sack in order to keep his team alive. But Upset feels like he needs to go full int, and he tries to save Bwipo, who is basically dead to rights, as the auto attack from Kaiser lands, giving him the ability to reposition with the Killer Instinct, on top of Upset, forcing the Feather Storm out, and as Bwipo falls, Upset's flight gets cut short, and he is slammed to the ground. SK pick up a game they were hard losing, and guarantee four games in this series as we move over to our third matchup. Well folks, we got a series on our hands, and it appears closer than expected. One thing that did not appear close was Game 3. Now, Aurora, just highlight all the things Fnatic have going for them right now. Now, 
thank you for that. So, as you can see, the one saving grace is the Elder Dragon. Earning this would buy some time for SK. SK starts the objective off and Blue begins to flank around, but he goes over a fanatic ward in which is the go signal for Karma to speed up the entire fanatic lineup. Treats dives in, charming up as many people as possible before dying isolated. Once the charm wears off, self me dives straight onto SK's backline allowing Upset to join him, and Kaiser gets the triple kill, all while Hillisang is entertaining Tinks, who is forced to run, and it's time for Formula L.E.C. Udia, you would think, would be quicker than Hecarim, but Hecker gets sped up by Bwipo's karma, and... goes cloppity clop through him, executing him off, and Fnatic win the team fight and get themselves that juicy Drake. Well, we're into game four and we're not gonna be looking to play because this is the last game. And we are gonna be summarizing these two teams this series. Let's start with SK. Analysts felt that this series was heavily Fnatic favored because there was more stage presence for this lineup. They're not all rookies, and in fact, they were very seasoned pros. SK, I felt, would have a bit of a better chance than most of the other teams going up against Fnatic, because they have been performing very well this season. And at the start of the year, I put SK dead last, behind Vitality. And personally, that was because I didn't think they were going to perform unless you had Genax or Treats stepping up for the roster and getting them these big carries. And they did that in the series. They showed up and tried to get their team over the line. Jezu, in my opinion, stepped up. And also Tinks. Give them all shoutouts. Blue... I felt had a few struggles here and there, but he still performed very well. And as a whole, this SK lineup, who exit playoffs here, still performed extremely well. They've got to be proud with their performances. They realistically shouldn't have been top six material, and yet they were, and they performed incredibly well on the first playoffs game this year. The first one for SK since last year where they had a completely different roster. And it's the first time a lot of these players have been on stage. And a lot of them haven't been on stage in over a year if they had. And that's amazing to see this team come into playoffs and just pop off against a team that's made it to... The finals nearly every single year, only missing maybe a couple. And that's huge, considering SK were many people's team to finish last. Now, looking at Fnatic, I said that they needed Upset to perform. He did, but there was other people on this team that stepped up. Niski, he performed incredibly well. I would probably have given him player of the series, hands down. His Oriana was clean in turning around team fights, picking up massive shockwaves. He outplayed SK on that turret dive in game number one. Granted, he did then just turret dive and int, but nah, who cares? He still did a lot for this Fnatic roster in this game, and he wasn't stuck playing the likes of his Seraphine, where he's playing supporty. He went full kill mode in these games, and he did well. And as such, this series was very good and dominant from Fnatic once they picked up a lead. Yes, SK did turn around one of these games where Fnatic were winning and had a lead, but they still managed to control the game very well, and... This, to me, felt like 
Fnatic showing up to playoffs like they have to prove something. They were not in the upper bracket. They need every single win to make it to the grand finals. They don't have G2 in their path. And personally, Fnatic could make it to the finals in the lower bracket. Nonetheless, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you're new if you want to. And I'll see you guys next time where I guess we'll be breaking down 100 Thieves Dig in that very one-sided series. I'll see you guys then.